I promised uh, Joe Marino that Fred Marino that I would stay for more than three minutes, so uh, that's what I propose to do. Uh, I'll just be addressing myself to a uh, half dozen slides or so by way of introducing uh, those who are not familiar with the details that are on the trial and uh, so that other speakers need not have to give the basic introduction to the trial that they normally might give in a presentation. Is that clear? Uh, in this first slide, um, we have a painting uh, showing the way the man in the shroud must have been placed there, so that both the front and the back of the body were making in contact with the shroud, the head, front, face, and dorsal, head uh, toward the center, and the feet at both ends. Is that, is that in focus? No. I don't know. <laughs> but I don't know. So here is a black and white photograph of trial showing uh, the twin image exactly as it would have been put there in that, uh, as in that first painting. Uh, what you notice here are uh, the fact that there are burn marks, lines running the entire length of the cloth. They're from the fire of 1532, well documented. Uh, also triangular patches over the poles that were burnt into the shroud at that time during the fire and watermarks that also result from that uh, very moment when uh, attempts were made to uh, quench the fire. At the one entire length of the shroud, uh, you see that a strip of linen has been attached. Uh, there's controversy about that, but uh, I won't go into that now. It does serve one purpose, and it has the function of centering the image and the shroud. Without it, the image would be too close to one end. Uh, coming in closer, we see that the image is very detailed. It's not a, an amorphous mass of any kind, it's uh, of some kind. It is a real human cadaver that we see on here, and that can be argued by, better by pathologists. But he has blood stains from puncture wounds around the head. He has a wound on the right side. He has a wound to one hand that we can see that the hand is covered. But from the runoff of blood down both arms, we understand, of course, that the other hand was also punctured. There are generalized contusions around the knees and shins and blood stained feet. So he suffered, at least from the frontal uh, side, we can see he suffered all the wounds that Jesus did uh, from the New Testament. Um, looking more closely at the face, we see special details. The shape of blood flows can be proved to be the way blood should look as if it had emanated from a real body. Um, one eyebrow is higher than the other. Uh, I don't need, need to go into that. But it has his hair about shoulder length. The face appears to be disembodied because of the way the image went on. The image, the cloth must have been touching the forehead, the nose, the chin perhaps, and hovering over the collarbone area, touching again the pectorals and the knuckles and so forth. So in those places, the image is darker than uh, in other areas. And down here, uh, almost no image at all. What flows? I won't go into that slide after maybe that one. We get a close-up view of the wounds in the hands here. You'll see many pictures of this. Uh, the wound in the side, the cut is here. The seepage uh, shows already that uh, clear serum, the, the red blood has separated itself from the clear serum, and uh, so it can be argued that that is post-mortem bleeding. The area of the feet show uh, copious blood after death, of course, blood stops circulating and drops by gravity in various parts of the body. And when the nail was removed from the foot, um, we can obviously have evidence that there was a nail at the foot uh, also, and that this is a real crucifixion. Uh, obviously, it uh, broke the uh, coagulation and copious amounts of blood came out. So those are some details from the trial itself that others don't need to go into, and I'll leave the podium to the first speaker. Thank you very much.